No, I don't think it's hard to be a female in reggae today. I think that for me, I see people more as energy, less as gender when I see them. Now, I'm sure there are some different experiences that, you know, of course, throughout the history of time, the struggle of equality is present in all aspects of life, yeah, especially, especially Western life and culture. But what we have now is a rising feminine energy on the planet. So right now, uh, there is a return of the divine feminine and a rebalance of the energies. For a long time, it's been masculine. And that has been the dominant uh, force, uh, so to speak. But right now, we have the feminine energy rising to balance that. So you're going to see, and not, that doesn't mean just females. That's the feminine energy inside of everybody because everybody has both. Everybody has masculine and feminine in them. So now the feminine energy is, is rising up to, to balance the masculine. So you will see um, more uh, women and, and that feminine side coming forward, in, especially in the arts, because creative beings are more in tune with, that, with the higher selves. And the more that we are in tune with our creative selves, the more we are a reflection of that. So, yeah, we just keep trotting, you know. It's interesting you say that because there has always been some really strong female artists, you know. Um, somebody that I grew up listening to is Judy Moat, And I love, love, love her albums, you know. She, she has recorded albums and is still recording. She was one of the I3s. Same with Marsha Griffiths and, and Rita Marley and others. Then you have uh, uh, the next generation like Queen Ifrika and Tanya Stevens and... Um, artists like that and now you have a next generation again which is possibly who you're seeing more of um, now that I think also you know the way the world is with technology we are more exposed to more as well so you have artists like Janine and Hempra Sativa and Kalissa and yeah you know like that the sort of the the upcoming artists that are starting to really re-engage with the planet as far as females in reggae is definitely there well for me personally my mother brought me up on great music so it was it was something music music in general was something that was very just a part of my blood when I was growing up I, I was drawn to it I was the I was the kid that was it with my headphones in my room just listening to music all the time all right so I listened to a lot of music but was something about reggae that just quite simply resonate resonated with me and when I was little I just I just loved the music and then as I grew up and I started to realize that the actual lyrics were saying something important and something for people and then that resonated with me again so in a sense I fell in love with it even more and then over time it became one of the main influences in my as a musician you know I first started playing guitar when I was 13 and I fell in love with the blues the blues was my first love and the guitar and then that grew and grew and grew and, and then reggae started becoming one of my main influences so I um, followed my intuition to Jamaica and uh, moved there in 2014 and have been making music and creating the Natalie Rice project with um, Jamaican musicians, Australian musicians, and you know, just keep evolving. I don't know what you call real reggae, you know, because real reggae, I don't know, that's, 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 uh, that's a perspective thing. What's real reggae? Reggae is the genre that has come from Jamaica, a tiny island that has had a massive impact on the entire world of music. Now that kind of impact has been so prolific and so positive that of course you're gonna find tiny islands in the middle of the Pacific that love reggae. They know Bob Marley and they, they have created their own style of reggae and it has a sound. You have, now, nowadays you have like the Polynesian reggae, you have Melanesian reggae from New Caledonia and Papua New Guinea and West Papua. Polynesian reggae from, you know, Samoa and Tonga and um, Fiji and these places 
PG is actually part of Melanesia. Um, and then you have South American reggae, and then you have in the middle of Australia, in the desert, where they're in, in remote Aboriginal communities, they play this reggae, which is like desert reggae, and, and also kind of like surf reggae. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a genre that really has just connected to so many people on so many levels. And from, I think it's, it's, a, it's a thing where, for me personally, I needed to go to Jamaica because for me it's, it's, it's the home, it's the heartbeat, it's the, you know, the place where reggae music came from. So I wanted to connect with that. Um, that's important for me. Other people create reggae and don't necessarily go there. I would encourage them to go there, but it doesn't mean that I don't listen to their music or I don't consider it valid, you know what I mean? Like, art is art. People make music, it comes from the right place, with the right intention, then it's good. Yeah, a whole heap. <laughs> Constantly learning. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think that whenever anybody picks up their life and puts it in a whole different environment with an open heart and an open mind, you're just going to learn. You're going to learn and you will teach as well. You know, that's life experience. And for me, um, immersing myself in a community in Kingston in particular has taught me a whole heap about music, but also about the culture and about the history of reggae and musicianship and it's a very, very, very rich, rich, rich culture and it's very conscious and, and positive as well. So, yeah, I'm constant, constantly learning. How, how many, uh, how long did, did it take to you to, uh, did you need to, to do your first, your, your album, your first album? Um, the album Rebel Frequency has been put together across maybe two years. We've been, some of the songs have been written from about two years ago. Another couple of the songs are as new as early this year. So, you know, the whole project, um, as far as the album goes, has been in the works since I moved to Kingston. But, um, yeah, like just that intention to put together an album that represents um, the live show, for one, but also that represents, you know, the evolution of the project and where we are and the lyrical content is very important as well so we have a lyric book in there and um, yeah like to be able to collaborate with some of the upcoming artists as well as like so we have Julian Marley, Dre Island, Janine, Kabaka Pyramid and Notice Heavyweight Rockers and Raging Fire so these are all artists that well, we're fans of them. <laughs> and so it's a pleasure to be able to, yeah, create something fresh and something new, you know? Yeah. Just by the nature of me coming from Australia and going to Jamaica and then making music together is in itself something that's never really been done from Australian perspective. There's maybe, like, we have a, a, one other friend um, Mr. Savona, who, who is a producer who has moved to, who has spent some time in Kingston and created music there. And so he, when, when, whenever you do that, you bring, you know, you, you bring your, your sort of musical DNA with you, you know. So whatever I, I would, whatever I was going to create in Jamaica was going to be a combination of what I have already, you know, what, what is part of my foundation as a musician, which is a whole heap of different sounds including you know Latin music you know West African music I'm a percussionist as well um, rock roots blues bring that into you know the 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 reggae um, and roots culture in Jamaica and it just naturally is sort of create something different and, and something new because my, my voice as well is different you know it's it's not straight out of it's not Jamaican voice so um, yeah, so you know that that in itself is is set to create something different, and that's what we've done with with Rebel Frequency and with the Natalie Rise project. Yeah, it's really a, a how do you say it? It's a cross cultural collaboration as well as you know uniting people from across the planet in in one project. Very generally speaking, the intention of the movement, including the lyrics and 
the beats and the melodies is summed up in full freedom. Now, when we say full freedom, we mean full freedom from systemic oppression, freedom to be who we are as evolving multi-dimensional beings of light and to be free from mental slavery or forms of slavery. And that is something that is, um, you know, there's a great awakening happening on the planet right now and people are tuning into this themselves more, which is really important because we believe the real revolution is the evolution of our consciousness and our minds because the inner world we create is going to be what uh, manifests in the outer world. So we create our own future, we create our own world. Our music is aimed at rem reminding ourselves and our global family that people have the power to, to create their own destiny. Now with One People, obviously the chorus is you know, really focused on that connection that we have. And once we can free our minds, we inevitably help free the collective. And when we come together, we're just stronger. We're the majority, all right? So um, this song, One People, is special to me because it also captures a lot of my philosophy and my thoughts and my feelings on where we are as, a, as the human race at this time in the history of the world, in the history of Earth, and where we can go as well. So... Yeah, One People is a very special song. Politics are evolving on, on their own agenda. You know what I mean? So politics and governments, we don't really... We try not to give our energy to that because they've proven themselves to not serve the people. Not only in the last six months, what we've, as you mentioned, Donald Trump and these things happening around the world, these political events. All right, that's one thing, but this has been going on for a long time. So if it takes events like this for people to really see how backwards and how um, regressive politics and the political system is, then to me that's a positive thing. For example, in America, we just did six weeks touring there as Donald Trump was inaugurated as the president of the country. So many people, we were in five different cities every night, different city every night of the week. So we traveled quite a lot of the country. Every single night people came up and just said, we need this music more than ever. They, they said almost exactly the same words, especially now. Like the nation felt on the ground like they were just so fed up with the system. And to me that's, well, that, that was very obvious, but to me, it's also a positive thing because people are starting to actually think, wow, if this can, if someone like Donald Trump can even be elected, if that's even possible, then why am I even voting for something like this? You know, because the more that we give something our energy, that's the only way it can survive. As soon as we take our energy away from something, it will start to become obsolete. So the way. I think is that the future is definitely the people and, and sovereign communities and without necessarily a one governance, especially corporate governance. So um, when we start to put our energy and thought into those things and take it away from the current system, then we're going to start to grow this and this is going to start to diminish. So that is what we're, um, you know, especially me, that's what I'm focusing on with, with what I say and, and, and what I do and how I feel and ways to communicate that and ways for my own self to think of how, how we can do it, you know, as, as a people. And it's a very exciting time because people are already doing that. <laughs> people already have sovereign communities. People are already doing it. So it's a matter of our, us finding our way and just following our intuition and, and knowing that in ourselves yeah another world is possible another reality this one isn't good for people it's not nice it's 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 unsustainable it's bad for the environment it's bad for your spirit it's bad for health there's a no idea of, of of the holistic and the potential of life and life force so yeah we have to dash away that and go for our next thing <laughs> Definitely. Um, singing in the studio is very different to singing live. <laughs> studio is great. It's really great. It's, it's like a magnifying glass on your voice. So 
you know, studio is fun. You have to be in the right, the right mood and the right energy to capture that, that, um, the, the quality or, or that, that energy in your voice. So that's, you know, that, that's something that we love to do and we need to do more of, I think. Um, but performing live is, well, we just, I love to perform live. I love touring. And that's because you really, it's a, it's a real time connection with people. It's not us performing for people. It's us creating an energy exchange together. And we always like to get our audiences involved and, and include them in a performance. And yeah, like for singing, it's, it's just it's just one of those things that connect that can connect you and connect you to people and connect you to a moment and and we focus our energy in the moment on 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 trying to unify you know unify our energy and amplify our energy with the right intentions and that has a positive impact um, on our lives <laughs> and we hope on the lives of the people in the audience too. Do I sing for? Yeah. Yeah, we sing for freedom. Sing for freedom. Yeah, sing for life, sing for the future, for possibility, for potential, yeah, all of those things. <laughs>